Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Superman Lois, but also the Batgirl film. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV or DC EU videos later this year. Okay, so as you guys know, we cover both DC EU and DC TV topics on the channel. Obviously, we talk about the Arrowverse a bit more. However, there are many films coming up that I can't wait to talk about. And we're going to be 100% covering every time new news comes out. That's in regards to the Batman, the Flash, and also this Batgirl film because I'm really, really looking forward to it for multiple reasons. But one of the coolest things just was announced today, and this was a thing that was announced a while ago, but for a different film. And this is, and this is coming from the rap, I'll leave the link in the description below, that... Michael Keaton is going to be joining the Batgirl film, which is crazy because he literally is going to be in the Flash film in not a long time. It's coming out in November 2022. So in under a year's time, we're going to be seeing Michael Keaton finally suited up as Batman once again in the Flash. And now we're going to see him again. So let's go ahead and read through this report from the rap. So Michael Keaton has joined the cast of Batgirl and will start as Cape Crusader, Bruce Wayne slash Batman in the upcoming film set at HBO Max, the rap has confirmed. Keaton will first suit up as Batman in Ezra Miller's The Flash, which will be released on November 4th, 2022. As the rap first exclusively reported, Keaton was in talks to return to the role of Batman after nearly 30 years to appear alongside Ezra Miller in Warner Brothers' The Flash. And here are some extra details about him showing up and, you know, the history of Michael Keaton as Batman. So, Keaton first played Batman in Tim Burton's 1989 blockbuster of the same name, which was a critical and financial success that changed how superhero films were viewed and paved the way for the genre's future box office domination. Keaton's casting was initially controversial amongst fans as he was primarily known for broad comedies. By his performance, particularly how he used his comic background in his portrayal of Bruce Wayne to differentiate it from Batman, was widely praised and is now regarded as a seminal moment in comic book films. Keaton last played Batman in 1992's Batman Returns, but quit the role during the development of a third film after Burton was pushed out as director and replaced with Joel Schumacher, who took the series in a campier direction with Batman Forever and Batman and Robin. In the Heights, breakout star Leslie Grace has won the coveted role in Batgirl and will star as crime fighter Barbara Gordon in the upcoming film set at HBO Max and Bad Boys for Life filmmaking duo Adil El Arbi and Belal Fala are set to direct the film for HBO Max. Birds of Prey screenwriter Christina Hodgson, who wrote The Flash to DC, will write the script of Batgirl. So, as you guys know, this Batgirl film has been in development for a long time, and we're going to get back to Keaton in just a second, but I just kind of want to give you some background as to this Batgirl film. It was originally set to be directed by Joss Whedon, however, due to circumstances, he dropped out of the film, and the state of the Batgirl film was pretty much unknown for a number of years. But then as soon as the directors came on and Christina Hodgson was on board to write the film, everything came together very quickly and they are actually shooting it right now and this is why the report of Michael Keaton coming back as Batman has been released. It should be noted, like I said before, that Christina Hodgson, who wrote Birds of Prey and also wrote the upcoming Flash film, is going to be writing, or has already written, the Batgirl script. So I think that could be the linking connection between the Flash and Batgirl, could Hodson be the reason why they're bringing the character back? Beyond Keaton wanting to come back or Warner Brothers or DC asking him to return, I think maybe her idea with the story kind of links the two films together, and I would definitely be interested to see if that link actually happens, because this Batgirl film is supposed to come out relatively soon. What do you think about that? Let me know in the comments down below. And one more thing. HBO Max. Now, they are setting a bunch of films at HBO Max, so this Batgirl film is supposed to debut there and not in cinemas. However, they just backtracked on one of their big projects, and I would argue this is even bigger than Blue Beetle, which was just taken off of HBO Max and is going to be released exclusively in cinemas, and it will probably come to HBO Max afterwards. 
So one would have to assume at some point maybe this is going to happen to this Batgirl film, especially now that they got the star power of Michael Keaton as Batman returning, especially since he's coming back in the Flash and it's a big deal right now, people are freaking out about this. So with him coming into the cast of Batgirl, I feel like this is definitely a thing that could happen in the near future. Maybe Batgirl will become exclusive to cinemas. But yeah, so my thoughts on Michael Keaton returning and suiting up as Batman once again after the Flash film. I'm so excited. I was even there when they were filming the Flash because they were filming it in London. And I slightly missed Michael Keaton and literally left before he came. But it was just so exciting and I feel like I've gauged the online kind of sphere and how they feel and everyone is just so excited to see him return and that's mainly because his films are so beloved and he kind of abruptly left when there was supposed to be a third film and now we sort of got that redemption with The Flash similar to what happened in No Way Home recently with a certain other Spider-Man. I won't go into spoilers because I don't want to spoil you guys. But I feel like this is extra and this is not just redemption, this is continuing his story even beyond The Flash. And could this mean that Michael Keaton's Batman is officially the new Flash of the DCEU? It very well could be. And the reason why people are questioning this right now is because they don't know if the Batman, Robert Pattinson's Batman, is going to be in the DCEU. From all accounts, it seems like they are doing a Joker again, or a Dark Knight, where they're not connecting to anything else, and it's in its own individual world. I wouldn't be surprised if it is set in Joker's world, to be honest, but I don't think it's set in the DCEU. I think it's a totally different type of DC film, and something like Batgirl and something like The Flash is definitely rooted in, you know, the DCEU's normal sensibilities, but the Batman is something different, just like Joker. So, I definitely think they are lining up Michael Keaton to regularly return as Batman, considering this will be his second appearance. When is his next appearance going to be, is the big question. So, let me know in the comments below, are you really excited to see Michael Keaton return, and are you happy to see him in the Batgirl film? And are you excited about the Batgirl film? I am, because Barbara's story is very interesting, and I wonder which story they're gonna go for are they going to angle more for a killing joke type story I don't think they're gonna specifically go for that I think it'll be a little bit different than that I don't think she's going to be Oracle at this point although there is always the chance that she later becomes Oracle when they do a killing joke storyline but for now I think this is going to be a separate thing and I'm pretty sure Michael Keaton's Batman isn't going to be Batgirl's version of Batman or the Bruce Wayne that she knows this is definitely to do with the multiverse because I'm pretty sure that's how they are trying to introduce him in the Flash film as a Batman from another Earth who will maybe take on the mantle of Batman of Earth Prime or Earth One or whatever the DCU actually calls it and so he will take over in the absence of Ben Affleck's Batman. Okay, let's move on to the next topic. This is to do with Superman Lois Season 2. So Superman Lois Season 2 is coming up very soon at the start of January. That is January 11th. So that is a Tuesday as per usual, like season one, and it's going to be coming out at 8, 7 central, taking over for The Flash's time spot. Obviously, The Flash has been off for a few weeks now, but they will be returning in March, so it's not the end of the world. However, I'm really excited to see Superman and Lois season two because they've been filming it for a while, and they said, oh, we're going to release it in January rather than in November like The Flash. Because if you guys remember last year, they were heavily delayed in terms of their filming and it led to a lot of schedule changes and mess ups for all the different shows. So they've given themselves some more time, which I definitely think is good. But I'm just curious to see what actually is going to be going down because it's been a while since season one ended and it was just such a great season. I love Superman Lois and... I can't wait to make more videos about it and it seems like you guys are interested because my recent Superman Lois related videos have been doing pretty good so if you like them stick around and I'm sorry that this is like a joint video but I thought I would just add them together because why not. So they just released the first poster for Superman Lois season 2 and it looks like this. This is a awesome poster it's obviously in the typical kind of superhero style where you have the stacked heads, you have the four different characters here. Obviously this is the Kent family, who are the main stars of the show. And let's analyze this. So I love the style of the poster, the fact that we get this kind of 
heat vision type divide between the white of the poster and then the bluish background with the crackling storm in the back and it seems that there are two choppers or two helicopters that are probably manned by members of the DOD as we have this new storyline that was introduced in the trailer that they released a couple of weeks ago introducing basically General Lane's replacement but we'll talk more about him later so I'm pretty sure the photos that they're actually using here have been used before in older posters I just recognize the poses I don't know if it was specifically like the big season one poster but I've definitely seen them before I think maybe the only difference could be Jordan because I don't really recognize it unless it's like heavily zoomed out and like in one of the other posters it was heavily cropped in but Nevertheless, this happens in CW posters because they don't always have time. They have a very busy shooting schedule, and I believe they take most of these promo photos back in LA. As far as I know, but I could be wrong about that. Anyway, enough with that. Let's look at the tagline. So it says, small town, big secrets. This obviously is in relation to the government that is happening and, you know, whatever is going to be going down in Smallville is going to be to do with secrets, much like season one was, where you had the kryptonite mine hidden to the public and Lois and Superman had to suss out what was actually going on and that everything was in relation to Morgan Edge and his big plans were off. But that about does it for my analysis of the poster. Let's move on to some promo photos that they just released for season two, episode one. Now, the first photo we have is one of Kyle Cushing. So, Kyle obviously went through a big change last season because of his allegiance to Morgan Edge, and basically everyone rebelled against him in the town, including all his co-workers, and he pretty much only had his family and the Kents. But now he's looking all revitalized, and it looks like he's working for a new potential mayor of the city, Daniel Hart. Obviously, he is completely pasted all over the photo. I mean, he's even wearing a t-shirt, and I presume this is in his house, so I wonder what his family thinks about him pasting all this all over the walls. But it's great to see him actually finding something he's happy about, because he definitely went through a big struggle and big character changes last season. So, moving on to the next photo, we have a photo of Clark, and seems that this is in the exact same place as the previous photo, so probably... This is in the Cushings, and he is here talking to Kyle. I don't know what exactly they're going to be talking about. Maybe it could just be a normal conversation, although in the past, Clark and Kyle haven't been the best of friends. Although now they've gone through what they've gone through, I think that might make them a little bit closer this season. So let's move on. We have a photo of Chrissy at the Smallville Gazette talking to a source. I don't know what they're specifically talking about, but it's her doing her journalism, just teasing, yes, this is going to continue in the new season, and hopefully Lois is going to be doing lots of journalism too. Confirming my thoughts about where Clark is, we have this photo of both Kyle and Clark together inside the Cushing's house, and then we cut to a bit later in the evening, again inside the Cushing's house. Seems like Clark has been there all day, and he has something to talk to both of the Cushing, so that includes Lana, as you can see in this photo about, and again, you can see the posters and leaflets on the kitchen counter, so maybe Lana is going to be working alongside Kyle to do this. It seems it's something they're definitely passionate about because it is everywhere, as you can see in the next photo. Again, it's on the fridge. I mean, I think this whole house is just like, elect Daniel Hart for mayor. Elect Daniel Hart for mayor. I wouldn't be surprised if Carl put it in his kids' rooms. Anyway, let's move on to the next thing. So this is a photo of John Henry Irons in his van, it seems. And during this scene, he is talking to his daughter, who has just newly returned and escaped from his earth this obviously begs the question what happened to their version of superman because that version of superman actually still exists unless their earth was destroyed by crisis so at some point surely they're going to try and go back and save their earth from this evil version of superman and maybe that's a storyline for the future where our version of superman could come over and fight an evil version of himself and save an entire planet from destruction because what they left behind wasn't good and it doesn't erase them suddenly because they're on a different planet. So the next photo shows Lois back with Chrissy and they are heavy in investigation as shown by all the stacked papers absolutely everywhere. Now let's move on from here we have the first photo of Superman. Now Tyler Hecklin looks amazing in this suit. 
I don't think there is any specific upgrades this season because the suit that they created last season was just so good. Obviously, it was a big upgrade from his suit from Supergirl, but that was more temporary. They've explained many times that that suit was just meant to be for him showing up like once a year or something. And then with him getting a whole show, they needed to upgrade it so it could be more durable for a longer amount of time because the CW shows, as you know, and as I've said many times, they shoot for a long ass time, like nine, 10 months of the year. So yeah, I love this photo. He's looking awesome. I can't wait to see more Superman. So let's move on. We have Natalie who, as I said, just returned. Seems like she's settling into society and there is a school bus in the background so you can presume she is walking over there so it seems maybe she is actually going to be trying to live on earth one properly despite having left her own home obviously she doesn't have much left there and what she does have is on this earth so it makes sense that they kind of want to try and move on from this and yes there's going to be some big hurdles in terms of Lois, her mom from another earth and superman the villain of their earth being constantly present definitely going to bring up some bad memories for her. So we have this photo back in the Smallville Gazette and Lois is here talking with Chrissy about their investigation and we cut to the final two photos that we have for season two episode one and this is a close-up photo of Superman and by the looks of Tyler Hecklin's facial expression seems like he is angered by what he is hearing and you can presume this is from the exact same scene that you saw a couple of times in that trailer they released and if we move to the next photo we get more context about this so here we have a photo of lieutenant mitch anderson played by ian bowen and it's been teased that he's going to be a big kind of threat for superman this season especially in terms of him being in charge of the dod and having such power and resources with superman as they said in the trailer denying his allegiance to America because he already gave that a long time ago and doesn't need to sign a form about it. It seems this lieutenant is going to take it in the wrong way and he's going to have a big grudge against Superman and it will probably be a storyline for a big chunk of the season. But what's really interesting about this photo is this is pretty much the scene that we saw in the trailer where Superman is talking to Mitch but in the trailer we don't see these two people in the background. And these two people in the background look like normal soldiers. However, they are kitted out in, in Superman-like costumes. So what is the reason for them wearing this? Well, I'm guessing what they've done is they wanted Superman's allegiance to lead an army for America, for the US Army. And so they've used the DOD's resources to give boosts of power to their soldiers. By maybe injecting something that gives people who are normal humans temporary powers. Much like we got last season with what Morgan Edge was doing. He was creating Kryptonians. Obviously it's in a different way because he was doing it through the old souls of these old Kryptonians who would take over these normal humans. But in this case, it's definitely different. It seems they are in full control and they're just standing there. And I think it's really, really telling that they've got the House of El symbol one because obviously that is just a symbol of the house. But in the case of this, I think this is the symbol of Superman. And that's what America believes the House of El crest to be. And I could be entirely wrong about this, but I really do think that these people, because we don't see them in the trailer, have somehow flew in or sped into this actual shot, which has pretty much convinced me that they do have powers and the DOD has been experimenting since General Lane left. Obviously, at the end of season one, General Lane said, oh, I'm not going to be in the DOD anymore. And... Theoretically, that's a good thing because the DoD was never that good. However, that leaves his role open to someone who is far more nefarious and far more less trusting and has absolutely no ties to the Kemp family or Superman. So that person can pretty much do anything. And definitely this is a worst case scenario where this guy is trying to get Superman's allegiance and just because he didn't get his allegiance, he turns these people into soldiers and basically creates a Superman army for America and I think you're going to see them actually fighting off against Superman, maybe in this episode, but I would presume in the next couple of episodes after this, as the storyline develops, and whoever turns out to be the main villain of the season, this lieutenant, Lieutenant Mitch Anderson, is going to be around for a while, and I would presume he's going to be one of the smaller villains, unless he has a big twist like Morgan Edge, 
but I doubt they're going to copy that because they've already done a similar thing by creating these fake Kryptonian soldiers. So I think the main villain of the season is going to be someone different and probably not Kryptonian. It's highly likely that they are going to be an alien because anyone who wants to take down Superman has to be extremely powerful or be extremely smart like Lex Luthor to try and defeat the Man of Steel and I mean he's called the Man of Steel for a reason. So that about does it for this video guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Sorry that it's been a longer video but I wanted to combine both of these topics into one video because they're both very interesting and I think you guys probably have an interest in both the DCEU and DCTV and you know there is crossover between them because they became officially linked in Crisis on Infinite Earths when Ezra Miller's Flash turned up and met Grant Gustin's Flash and with the Flash film coming out there is definitely going to be more crossover. So if you did enjoy the video please be sure to leave a like and a comment it really helps the channel out. Also subscribe as we try and reach 110,000 subscribers. We're under 900 subs off so I'd really appreciate you guys if you could spread the word about my channel and also as we end this video you can click on the top right corner of the screen to watch my latest video but for now thank you guys so much for watching and i'll catch you guys later goodbye i see red